Let's see. Well, first we have uh, right Sunday at seven, two o four Mets pizza help session. Uh, today at from twelve to one thirty is a great time to come by too if you have some questions. And then that following Monday after our help session is our exam two. Let's just take a quick look at this guy. Uh, okay. Well, so right off the bat, let's look at this one. Strontium has to be what? Plus two. Plus two. Right? The answer is right there. All right? Okay, so strontium has to be plus two. Everybody, oxygen is always negative two. All right, so look, you're two thirds of the way done. All right? Now you gotta play the game and divvy all this stuff up, right? Total of a positive two on just the strontium. You just have one of them. But the oxygens, you're going to have a total of negative 12. Yeah, because two times three times a negative two, a negative 12. So right here in the middle, due to the nitrogen, you need a positive 10. And then you don't quite circle it yet. You go and see how many nitrogens you have. Two. So each N must be positive 5. All right, that's the game you play for oxidation states. For this question, question 2, hopefully you're playing with this game, playing with this equation. Big M is moles over liters. Hopefully, right? Okay, now you know this one and you know that one. You have to solve for moles, then convert it to grams. That's the game. This guy is going to be 0.85. This guy is just 1. So solve for moles. Yeah, it's going to be 0.85. Yeah. 0.85. And then convert to grams. And to convert from moles to grams, you use molar mass. Add it all up. You do all that. I think the molar mass is around 330 or some. But the final answer is 200 and something. Yeah, 282. Somewhere around there, depending on your rounding. Okay. There's no how would you prepare anything. They just wanted to get the number of grams. Okay. So that's what we've reviewed so far. Now we have a couple things yet. One is, let's let uh, Aaron pick here. Aaron, what we have yet I think to talk about, from my perspective, the toughest stuff, here's one of them, limiting reactant questions. Then another one is all this reaction stuff. Which one are you less comfortable with? The reaction stuff or limiting reactants? Limiting reactants. I mean, that was a long, I agree with them. I mean, from my perspective, I think my guess would be that it'd be tougher, but I'd prefer to hear it from a student. All right, this is a long time ago. <laughs> okay, so we have a we have a reaction, Paul, and they're saying so. There's our here's our reaction. Nice. Okay, they're saying that we have 5.7 grams of lead nitrate, 12.9 grams of sodium sulfate. They want to know the grams of sodium nitrate produced supposed to be a limiting reactant problem. So my question to you is, what is a limiting reactant problem? Yeah, it's just gonna be one of these. One of those reactants is your limiting reactant, or your limiting reagent, right? Okay, smallest one. Now, you're, you're, just finish your sentence, though. We're going to convert. Notice these guys are both reactants, right? They're both reactants. So you convert them to a product. If the question was just determining the limiting reagent, you just pick a product, convert both of those to product, and then you say the one with the. S you said it. The one with the smallest answer is gives your limiting reagent, right? So 
Here, though, we don't need to pick a product. In fact, they don't even ask what the limiting reagent is. They want to know how many grams of sodium nitrate are produced. So at the very end here, The very end, we're going to get grams of sodium nitrate. Okay, but we have to start out with what? Yeah. Well, yeah, you can start out with this one. Then do the same thing again for that one, right? Let's just start with one. 12.9 grams of Na2SO4. Now, the game is just what Alyssa said. We're going to convert that to grams of sodium nitrate. We're going to convert the 5.7 grams of lead to nitrate so to, to sodium nitrate. Yeah, we have to do both. It's a lot of It's twice the work what you think it would be. And then we're going to pick our smallest answer. Okay, let's first do this first conversion here. Uh, Kelly, what would you do first here? Okay, let's get the big let's get the big picture. We have to convert grams to moles. The reason why you do that is so that you can use the what bridge? Mole bridge. And then after you get the mole bridge, convert it back to grams. Right? Because look at and what was the whole mole bridge story? All it was is you look at the coefficients in front of here. There those were the ratios. And if there's nothing written, it's a, like look in front of that lead nitrate. That number is supposed to be what? And no one ever writes it, it's a one. So you have all these ratios. Mole bridge just converts one compound to another. And that's what we got to do, because we have sodium sulfate and sodium nitrate. But you can't use the mole bridge until you get into moles first. So, Priscilla, how are you going to get this into moles? What do you, what do, you do? Yeah, we need the molar mass of it. There's so many grams. Okay, so... I don't know. I don't know. Maybe just tell me what... Okay, I need two sodiums. What's sodium? 22.88. 22.88 times two, okay. And I need one sulfur plus... What's sulfur? 32.06. Plus, I need four oxygens. Okay, about 16, right? So 4 times 16. 141.8. Now, does the 141.8 go on the bottom, or did I screw up? On the bottom, right? Because the units have to cancel. And always, what number is right here? 1. Molar mass, it's always 1. Well, we never write it, but you can write it. It's always a 1. Okay, we're ready for the mole bridge. So, Caroline, what is my mole bridge ratio going to be? What over what? Moles of what on the bottom? Yeah, keep going. Moles of getting to cancel. Yeah. <laughs> this is too nice. Na2SO4, right? Then on the top, you're going to have moles of what, Caroline? What you're after, NaNO3. Okay, now what's the ratio? It's what? Two to one. Yeah, you just look at these numbers. The sodium nitrate, and we got the number right there. The sodium sulfate, look at the number right there. So two to one. Okay. Now we got to get to, uh, Jesus, we got to get to what? What's the last conversion factor here? Yeah. The molar mass of it. Okay. So, you have a periodic table? What's sodium? Jesus, what's sodium? Twi so that's about 23 then. And I have one of them plus. Uh, an N, which is 14, plus 3 times 16, right? 3 times 16. About 85? Oh, you got it. I thought I pushed the wrong button. Okay. So 
So everything on top, multiply, bottom, divide. So 12.9, divide by 141.8, times 2, times 85, about 15.5. OK. So what's that next? Exactly. We gotta do it all again for the other reactant. Exactly what Summer said. You hear what she said? She said you gotta do it all again for this one. Right? Uh, okay. So I have 5.7 grams of P B N O three two. Okay. The molar mass of PBNO3. Okay, Monica Soto Ruiz, help me out with that one. I'll add them up. What's PB? Here, I can give you a periodic table. Do you have one? Oh, you got one. Okay, what's PB? 207. Monica, how about uh, nitrogen? Fourteen. But I had, but I have how many nitrogens, everybody? Two. two. So times two. Plus now oxygen, fifteen point nine nine nine, which is about sixteen. But times six. Okay. So about three hundred thirty-one. And that three hundred thirty-one grams, Eric goes on the top or the bottom? Uh, bottom. Bottom. Yeah. Otherwise, it isn't going to cancel out. Now we're ready for that mole bridge. Summer, what's my mole bridge ratio going to be? Um, uh, yeah, did you hear? Exactly. Because I got to get it into moles of sodium nitrate. So that's why she has it on top. And then it's, she said one, she's right, one. Then the last step is the same. Molar mass of sodium nitrate is 85 grams. Okay, top, multiply, bottom, divide. 5.7, divide by 331, times two, times 85, about 2.9 or so. Okay, April, so what is my answer? How many grams of sodium nitrate are produced? You would say the 2.9. It's the smallest one, that's the one you pick. Okay, Aaron, it doesn't ask this, but let me ask it anyway. What is the limiting reactant? The uh, what? Yeah, what is the limiting reactant? You'd say it's what? All right, it's whatever gave you the smallest answer, and it was the... Lead nitrate. So if it asks, what's the limiting reactant? You'd say this one. OK. Let me ask another question, Monica Lopez. How many grams of lead nitrate are left at the end of the reaction? Right, at the end of the reaction, we made this 2.9 grams of sodium nitrate. Monica, how much of this stuff is left at the end of the reaction? Kind of a trick question, but it's just zero, right? It's all gone. That's what makes it the limiting reactant. It's gone. You can't make any more sodium nitrate. All this stuff is gone. But there's some what left. What reactant? 
sodium sulfate. There's some of that one left. Okay? So now we go and we answer this question, this part B. How many grams of the excess re reactant remain after the reaction is completed? So, Paul, how do we... First, what is the excess reactant? It's the what compound? The first one, the sodium sulfate. Okay, so the answer is going to be, you know, grams of sodium sulfate. That's going to be our answer, but how do you get it? Kelly, how do you get it? Did, did all the 12.9 react? Kelly, did all the... No, it didn't. So we, we have to take 12.9, subtract something, then we get our answer. Okay? So we'll take 12.9 grams, subtract something, then we'll have our answer. How do you get the something? Priscilla, how do we get the something? Now, there's two ways. And, and we, only, we only spent one day on this, so I could only harp on it for one day. But I said, use the limiting reactant for everything. Use it for everything. So once you know what it is, good. Convert, convert that to grams of the sodium nitrate. So, sorry, grams of the sodium sulfate, right? Because 5.7 grams of lead nitrate reacted. So convert it to sodium sulfate. That'll be the grams of sodium sulfate that reacted. And you put that number right in here. There's another way to do it. There's only one other way. Does anybody see what it is? How much, so, how much product was made? 2.9. We could convert this 2.9 grams of sodium nitrate to grams of the sodium sulfate, and that's the grams of sodium sulfate that reacted to make that stuff. So that would work too. But I just say, use a limiting reactant for everything. So let's use it, right? The 5.7 grams of the lead nitrate. Right? And we're going to convert that to grams of sodium sulfate. And whatever we get, that's what we're going to put in right there. Now, sometimes I, I hear the comment, oh, I understood it in class, or I followed it in class, but when I go home, I have no clue. That's because you're not solving them, I bet you, I'd put money on it. You're not solving it the way I'm solving it, right? I use logic. I start out here, what's the next thing I did? I didn't write jack, I wrote equals in the units. So it told me where to go. It told me when to quit, right? So that's how I handle these, right? I write down where I'm starting up. The next thing I write is where I want to end up every single time. That's how I do these. Okay, so we already know the molar mass of that lead nitrate. It was right here. So 331 grams of that stuff in a mole. Okay, now we're ready for the mole bridge. And we want to go to sodium sulfate. And the ratio is 1 to 1. 1 to 1. Yeah. Well, we need to convert the moles to grams. So we need another molar mass. Oh, no, we have it right here, don't we? Excellent. So in a mole, 141.8 grams of sodium sulfate. What do I get? Put it right down there. 
5.7 divide by 331 times 141.8 2.44 so that's the grams of sodium sulfate that reacted it's not my answer they want to know the grams of excess right the grams that are left o left over there you go you gotta subtract that 2.44 will go right in here take out start with what you had started with 12.9 Subtract out the 2.44. About 10.5, I guess. Depends on your rounding, but somewhere around 10.5. And that is my final answer. Okay? So these linear reagent problems were long, right? And to get the limiting reagent, we always start out with the reactants, convert them to some product, doesn't really matter which one, and then whichever product is the smallest answer, that'll be your, your yield, and whatever gave you the smallest answer will be your limiting reactant. Okay? That makes sense? Yeah. Will always be true, won't it? The amount of what at the end of the reaction is always zero. Limiting reagent or limiting reactant, same word. The amount of limiting reactant at the end of the reaction is always zero. Yep. Okay. So we've got this stuff. We've got another one. We've got solubility and we've got reactions. So I think we should jump down to these reactions. What do you think? If we're going to do solubility, right? How do you predict, Caroline? It's the very first question. How do you predict if a compound is soluble? The solubility rules. Okay. Now, Jared, do we have to memorize those things? Mm, oh! Every quiz I gave you the solubility rules, remember, is that complicated sheet of all these rules. I don't know where it is. I gave you one in lab. It looked, it looks like, uh, yeah, that, hold that high, Caroline. That's it. That's it. So it's in your notes, right? It also, this is what you're using on the quizzes. It looked like this on one side and the common reactions on the other, okay? Now, solubility is writing S's or AQ's. That's all this complicated side, right? Now, see how well you remember using this. Jasmine, whenever you see sodium, lithium, potassium in any compound, you always write, ended up writing what? It's always AQ. It was a very common one. Whenever you saw sodium, lithium, potassium, that's that very, that's that very first rule. You always wrote AQ. Okay. So I think we should go and let's try one of these. Now, to prepare us for writing reactions, I strongly, strongly suggest writing the charges on stuff. Because then it's going to be a lot easier to break things up when you start doing these reactions, notice it says salt everywhere. You got to combine cations and anions to make a salt. Well, it's a lot easier to write their formula, those little subscripts, if you write the charge. It'll stare at you right in the face. So let's try some of these. Let's, let's look at, I don't know, uh, this guy right here. What are the charges? Because that has a case. You know it's going to break up. You're going to write a little AQ on them. But the question kind of continues. It says, for those that are soluble, write the ions. So that is going to break up into what? Now, before I ask you, let's just write the charges. K is always plus one, right? Right up there, is that group one? K is always plus one. That, I don't care whether you know CRO4 or not. Its charge is negative two. Yeah, cause look at the formula. It's 2K, K2. So it has to be negative 2. 
So if you do that before you start, life is so much easier. Because then, Jesus, this thing is going to break up into what? What and what? K2, we said it was K plus, right? But how many of those K pluses? Two of them. You got to put the two out there. That is very different than putting it down here. No. Right? K, potassium ion is just K and a plus. That's it. That was a potassium ion. So you have two of them. And then the other thing is that CRO4 with what charge? Negative two. Right? That's a game that you play. The only way, Priscilla, that I can say, don't separate the CR and the four O's, that's where you got to know that the darn thing is, you may not remember its name, but you hopefully you recognize, oh, that's a polyatomic ion. Don't mess with them. Oh. Okay. So that's, that's how the whole thing works. Now, let's try some of these. All right. Let's ask, uh, well, Alyssa, well, hang on. Alyssa, did you want to mess with these some more, or do you want to try reactions? Try the reactions. Okay. Which is, this is really fine, because you're doing the same thing again anyway. Let's start with doing the charges. So, Monica Soto Ruiz. What charge do I put on the K? A what? A one, a plus one. And that CO3, Eric, what charge would you put on it? Negative two. Negative two. Whether you recognize that as carbonate or not doesn't matter because look, there's that darn two down there. Okay. The uh, NH4 summer? Plus one. CL, everybody? Negative, Negative one. Okay. Now there's a reason for doing that because it's this is why. Now you gotta figure out: Am I supposed to be looking at this side and make solids, or am I supposed to be looking at this side? There was one trick to doing it. At least I thought there was. April, what was it? Common reaction. Or precipitate, solid problem. Does anyone remember? Look for an acid. Because look at those common reactions. Every single one has an acid. So that's all you look for. Now, if you're going to look for an acid, you're supposed to look for what, Aaron? How'd you recognize an acid? It had a what out front? An H every single time has an H out front. Okay, so Monica Soto Ruiz, do you see an acid in A? Do you see an acid here? Where? What's that? You just ask, does it have an H out front? No. So, no acid. It has to be a solubility problem. So you look for solubility problem, right? Okay, so let's combine this stuff. The K, yeah, but write those little charges up there. The K with the CL, good. Write the charges up there because that tells you what the formula is. Remember, you do the diagonal with the charges. It's just going to be one to one. Okay. Then you got to combine the, the ammonium and put the carbonate. Right? So by starting out writing the charges, you just stick them over here right in the charges. And it stares at you in the face what the formula's got to be. What do you got to do with that two? Take it to the bottom. Right? Every single time, that's how it works. You do the diagonal move with the charges. Now you got to balance it. I've got two ammoniums, so I have to put a two here. Now I've got two chlorines, so I have to put a two here. Now I have two potassiums, but I'm okay because I have two potassiums. Okay. We've got a balanced equation. All the formulas are right. So Kelly, now 
right off the bat, though, anything with the sodium, lithium, potassium, we can put, what is a subscript? AQ or S? AQ, sodium, lithium, potassium. So this is going to be AQ. He's going to be AQ. All right. And if you look at the rules, I don't know if you have them or not, but that ammonium chloride is going to be AQ. All right. And remember, you have to start at the top. If you jump in the middle and see carbonate, oh, carbonates are insoluble. Doesn't work. You got to start at the top, right? And you hit that ammonium rule that says AQ, so you quit. Anything with that ammonium is AQ. So that is my which one? What equation? That is the molecular. We're done. Okay. We just wrote a balanced molecular equation. So then you write the ionic, and what happens in the ionic? You break everything up, right? You don't cancel them out yet, though. You just break everything up. In the ionic, you... Oh, sorry. The net ionic, you cancel. So can you picture what's going to happen for the ionic and the net ionic? Everything's going to cancel out on you. So this is an example where you're supposed to write no reaction because everything ends up canceling out on you. Okay? Well, Summer says because they're all AQ. Technically, she's not correct. I'm gonna, this is a perfect example for it. The reason why it's no reaction is that everything cancels in the net ionic reaction. Now, let's get to Summer's question. Let's, let's take a look at B. B is going to show you something. That's going to show you why she's technically not correct. Okay, uh, Priscilla. Is this B, is this a solubility problem or a common reaction problem? Common reaction problem, because she sees HF. Okay? So we have our acid, good deal. Caroline, which one is it? it has to be one of these. Huh? It has to be one of these. What is it? HF plus KOH. Shh. Right? Now, it all it has, a base. has a base, has an. And now, if you recognize the OH as a base, great, you're a step ahead. You know it has to be acid and a base. But if you don't know base is OH, fine, no big deal. You look for this carbonate. I don't see a carbonate in there. Clearly, there's no carbonate. Clearly, there's no sulfite. Clearly, there's no sulfide, so it, it has to be this one on top, whether you know what a base is or not. Okay? So remember, the trick to using this sheet was you write down, if you identify it, write down exactly what they tell you. And they tell you, you're definitely going to form water. So you write down water. And whenever they, well, I should leave some space here. Definitely write down water. You should probably put a little L to show that you don't break it up, but... And then the salt, every single one of these common reactions has salt. That just means combine the stuff that didn't do anything. So the K and the F. Now, again, though, I think it helps to write these charges first. Everything's one to one. But that way, when you combine the K and the F, you know exactly what the formula is. It's just going to be one to one because the charges go down. And it looks like it's nice and balanced. There's nothing really to do. Okay. So now we just, to finish our molecular equation, we have to write, use the solubility rules to write A, Q, and S on everything. If you have S, no big deal. You just write S on it and make sure you don't break it up in the ionic equation. Okay, now here's where we're getting that summer's question. Acids, you always write A, Q. Okay. Even this guy, even though this guy says AQ on him, he's an acid, you always write AQ, do you break him up? No, because he's not on the list of strong acids. He's not, on, he's not one of the six, so you don't break him up. Even though he says AQ, so he's hydrated. He's got water molecules around him. He's solvated. But he dissolves in water, but he doesn't break up. 
You follow the solubility rules, KOH will be AQ. KF, there's another K, AQ. Okay. So the ionic, you break up everything but the HF in the water. Net ionic, cancel what you can. Okay. We have about five minutes left. Let's let, uh, I have Jesus here. Jesus. Either pick a reaction or what's the ugliest thing you see up here? Like D, E, F here. What's the ugliest one you see? He says G. E, C, E, F, G. Where's G? Okay, there's G. Okay. So, Jasmine. Where'd my sheet go? Here it is. What type of problem is this? Is this going to be solubility? Or is it going to be a common reaction? And Jesus wants to do G. Which one would it be? Well, you look to you look for a is there a what? There's a there's an H in front. There's an acid. There's an acid. So it's definitely not going to be a solubility problem. Right? You recognize which acid reaction it's going to be? It's acid base again. Okay, so that means you're supposed to write, according to this thing, write H2O liquid plus what's left over. Again, I would write the darn little charges. I kind of lost my place here. Aaron, what charges do you write on the H and the I? Right, H is always going to be plus one. And you kind of tell. Just look down here as the subscripts. One to one. Both have minus one. The calcium, everybody, has to be plus two. I don't know if you remember hydroxide, but it's going to be negative. Right? You can just get on here and see the subscript on the calcium. Okay, so what are we going to combine? What and what? The I and the CA. See if you write those charges. Doesn't it stare at you what the formula has to be? Has to be what? CA what? I2. It has to be CAI2. Right? Okay. Do you see it, Priscilla? Right. Because remember, what game do you play with the charges? They go down the diagonal. So, so by look, writing the charges, it's, to me, it stares at me what the formula has to be. Now you have to do solids and AQs on stuff. Acids are always AQ. Calcium hydroxide, that doesn't sound too good here. Oh, but that's, it's an exception. Oh, that's a good one. That's an exception. Has to be AQ. Water, liquid, calcium, iodide, uh, they're all soluble. Oh, uh, we didn't balance the bloody thing. You have to have a two. And have a calcium. That's about it, right? Oh, yeah, we do. Okay, now we're good, right? Okay. So, this, this is a good one. Let's go ahead and write it, then we'll call it a day. Ionic and net ionic. Go ahead and write it. The ionic, is this one of the acids you break up? Yeah. Yep, so you're going to break this up into what? H plus and I minus, but you have a 2 out front, so you have to multiply through by 2. 2H two plus plus 2I minus, all right? And we said to break calcium hydroxide up. CA plus 2 plus... OH minus, but there's how many of those OH minuses? Two of them, right? 
Don't break up the H2O liquid. Hey Zeus, how would you break up this last one? CA plus 2 and 2 I's. And don't forget the charge on it, otherwise it'll get docked. Okay. There's my ionic. Net, just cancel what? Looks like the iodides that'll go, and that's. Oh, the calcium's too. Okay. And you'll have it. So, have a good break. <laughs> Stop by on Sunday at 7 if you want some more review.